Welcome back, and you are watching Abled Differently. This year's Sickle Cell Awareness Day was marked on the 17th of June. Take a look at how it went. June 19th was officially designated as World Sickle Cell Awareness Day. The International Awareness Day is observed annually with the goal of increasing public knowledge and understanding of the sickle cell disease. This is a global awareness campaign to celebrate World Sickle Day with the aim to increase public knowledge and understanding of sickle cell disease and the challenges experienced by patients and their families and caregivers. And they have been mentioned by the other speakers. They are not just physical challenges, not just pain or, or anemia. It's about emotional challenges, it's about sexual challenges, it's about spiritual challenges, and it's also about financial challenges. And I think one of our biggest challenges is financial challenges. Nobody should actually go into poverty because they're trying to, you know, to get their, their treatment. So we need to look at how can we support treatment for people with um, sickle cell disease. This year's theme is Shine the Light on Sickle Cell. Non-Communicable Disease Alliance of Kenya, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health and other partners, marked this day with the theme Tambua Haliaku, encouraging people to screen and take care of the sickle cell disease. Today is about screening and care. We're talking about access to screening and care. And we've been told that when we screen children early, we actually improve their quality of life, and not just the quality of life, but survival rates as well. Among the invited guests were sickle cell warriors who shed a light on the challenges experienced by them, their families, and caregivers. As we celebrate this day, remember, we are strong. We are beautiful. We are life filled with hope that conquers pain. We are heart, soul, mind, and life. Brian Oyugi, one of the warriors, gave an illustration of how the society views sickle cell warriors differently, especially at the workplace. Because of this condition, you know we have this pain and I can't express how the pain is. But the pain is like someone squeezing you, someone crushing you, it's like someone snapping you. That is how the pain we feel like when we go to the hospital. Therefore, when you are employed, uh, these employers uh, sometimes do not understand, understand us. Therefore, we are terminated from workplace. And uh, our social life began to be uh, not that well good. He further urged the Ministry of Health to liaise with the Ministry of Education to look into the placement of sickle cell students in warmer regions in Kenya as a way of giving reprieve to them. I would also like the Ministry of Health to collaborate with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of Education for placement of schools for warriors. Because uh, sometimes I was. I remember in my, during my school time, I could miss school and uh, I, I had to repeat my classes because uh, with sickle cell, people are affected with uh, climate change. Therefore, it is good to consider us, whatever we place us in schools, kindly work with the ministry, collaborate with the Ministry of Education for a, repl a placement of sickle cell. Sickle cell disease is an inherited illness that affects the red blood cells, which can either do lead to expressive symptoms or can make one a carrier of the disease. The chair of the Non-Communicable Disease Alliance of Kenya encouraged participants to focus their advocacy more on partners, policy makers, and the public to ensure the right policies and adequate response to the disease. We continue working with the public, with our civil society organizations, our member organizations, special aid organizations, and ministry of health to ensure that people living with sickle cell are at the, at the table when you're planning for whatever you're planning for, when you're going through the national program, the policy, they are part of it, not just uh, coming in as, you know, at the end, but they're part of us of telling us what their problems are so they can address them adequately. While sharing her motivation, 
Her Excellency Leo Wangamati reiterated her desire to see better standard of care for sickle cell warriors. Today is about the warriors. And the journey for sickle cell is a journey that I embrace from the bottom of my heart. Because I had a sickler in my office, a very wonderful young man that was 27 years old, and he succumbed to the disease. He was called Griffiths Waluboho, and I do this in memory and in honor of that young man. Her Excellency gave a passionate appeal to the Ministry of Health, reminding them of the strides made in the area and thanking them for their cooperation. And thanks to the wonderful work that Wazirio Ministry is doing and Dr. Mare, we actually have the warriors in the room and are able to stand here and give testimony and lobby and advocate for this space, which I think for a long time was neglected, not just by Ministry of Health, I think just as a community. Her county being amongst the hardest hit, Her Excellency Lea Wangamati placed the burden of the brunt of the disease on the availability of proper equipment for screening and care. I like to be very honest and to say until my husband became governor of Bungoma County, I didn't know much about sickle cell disease. Yet I have grown up in an endemic county. Waziri Bungoma County is endemic. And one day when I visited you in your office, you shared a small secret that you did your ECD education in Bungoma County. Waziri, I want to give you very sad news that a number of those children that you went to school with when you were two years, three years, four years old are not here today because they never made it past the five years or past the ten years because they probably were affected by sickle cell disease and then we did not have any programs or any treatments in place to look after them. But even as I deliver this very sad story, I'm also very hopeful and I'm very happy to stand here because advocacy works. When I first came to Bungoma County in 2017 when my husband got elected, I was told about sickle cell disease. We didn't even have the confirmation machine, the HV electrophoresis machine. And for a long time I was speaking to the partners in the room, I kept speaking to Dr. Kibet, I kept speaking to Ampat, and we would have to send our samples to Everett all the time for them to be confirmed. One, it is a huge cost for the patients, and then two, for most of our people, and Waziri, I'm sure you understand this, when you take a mother from Bumula or Sirisia sub-county in my county, and you're telling her, you need to come to Bungoma for your sample for your child to be extracted, then it's sent to Eldoret, you're essentially telling her this will not happen. They just don't believe it is going to happen. So much as that referral was open to us to take the samples to Eldred, the uptake was still very low because of the fact that you have to go very far to access this facility. And generally, there just wasn't much hope in the people who were affected. The chief guest, Dr. Rashida Mann, reiterated the government and the Ministry of Health support to sickle cell warriors. This is a day to renew our commitment towards raising awareness on sickle cell disease and ensuring that we mount a uniform, unified response towards this disease. I want to take this opportunity to recognize the sickle cell warriors. This is the day to celebrate and honor you as we reflect on how to accelerate sickle cell disease control interventions in the country. He further urged partners in prone areas to embrace sickle cell screening to further lighten the load. This theme also resonates with the efforts of the Ministry of Health, working closely with county governments, sickle cell warriors, private institutions, civil society and other stakeholders to ensure early identification of our sickle cell warriors so that they can be linked to care. In this slide, the Ministry of Health has established a national, multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder technical working group, which is working to address three key thematic areas of our sickle cell disease response. These are one, advocacy, two, screening, diagnosis, care and treatment, three, data, surveillance and research. While thanking Bungoma, Nairobi, Vihiga and Kisumu counties for their instrumental leadership in the fight of this disease, other counties were reminded to take their rightful place as the foot soldiers 
for sickle cell disease. Even as we commemorate this day, we must ask ourselves critical questions. Top among this is, have we done enough? The Ministry of Health is committed to implementing health system reforms to accelerate sickle cell control interventions in the country. We are indeed about to launch policy guidelines for infant screening of sickle cell disease. The guidelines, which will be implemented in phases, will ensure that infants are screened and linked to care. Newborn screening is already happening in Kisumu County, and we applaud the Health Department of Kisumu for being a front runner in this area. I recognize the efforts put forth by county governments in improving health services since the advent of devolution. I urge the counties to sustain these efforts and invest more in sickle cell disease, including procuring sufficient medicines, supplies, and technologies for screening, diagnosis, and management of the condition. Let's take a look at the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Article 25 of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities states that state parties shall, Part B, provide those health services needed by persons with disabilities, specifically because of their disabilities, including early identification and intervention as appropriate, and services designed to minimize and prevent further disabilities, including among children and older persons. And here is the tip for the day. The government is committed to achieving universal health coverage, as stipulated in the President's Big Four agenda. UHC entails that all individuals and communities receiving the health services they need without suffering financial hardship. It includes the full spectrum of essential quality health services from health promotion prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and palliative care. Indeed, the attainment of UHC is a noble and essential mission that will underpin the achievement of the core principle of the Vision 2030 Agenda. That is the realization of a society where no one is left behind. We've come to the end of the show today, and as always, Thank you for tuning in on KBC every other Sunday. Until next week, I've been your host, Jane Theory. Goodbye. We are here and we are strong. Let's be counted as we move on. Make a difference, change lives. As we tell our different stories, we are capable, beautiful, we are born to do great things. We're unstoppable, incredible, cause we're differently abled, differently.